My dear students, today we are going to discuss a topic on religion, the definition and components, then magic, religion and science. Religion is a main concern of man. Man, the social animal, is a spiritual being. The institution of religion is universal and it is found in all the societies, past and present. Phenomenon of religion is not of recent emergence and its beginning is unknown. Some artifacts and evidences of the burial practices of Neanderthal man indicate that human being was a religious creature long before history began. From the etymological point of view, the word religion is derived from the Latin word religio, which itself is derived from either the root leg, which means to gather, count, or observe, or from the root leg, which means to bind. Though religion is a universal phenomenon, it is understood differently by different people. Different writers have defined religion in various ways. According to D. N. Mazumdar and T. N. Madan, religion is the human response to the apprehension of something or power which is supernatural and supersensory. It is the expression of the manner and the type of adjustment effected by a people with their conception of the supernatural. Imal Durkheim, in his book, The Elementary Forms of Religious Life, defines religion as a unified system of beliefs and practices relative to sacred things, that is to say, things set apart and forbidden. According to Malinowski, religion is a mode of action as well as system of belief and a sociological phenomenon as well as a personal experience. According to Edward Sapir, religion is man's never ceasing attempt to discover a road to spiritual serenity across the perplexities and dangers of daily life. Religion and magic are two ways of tiding over crisis. Primitive men must have had to face the realities of life. He did so with his belief in some superior powers, either by trying to coerce it into service, that is, by magic, or by praying and offering worship to it, that is, by the religious approach. Magic is a system of manipulation by which an effect is sought through the action of unseen powers. It occupies a very important place in the primitive society. Many writers have defined magic in different ways. Bill Sennheiser defined magic as a body of techniques and methods for controlling the universe on the assumption that 
if certain procedures are followed minutely, certain results are inevitable. It presupposes an orderly universe of cause and effect. James George Fraser defined magic as inventory of beliefs and forms of behavior which are not subject to criticism, research, and elimination, and found that magical formulae are based on two principles, like produces like and once in contact, always in contact. He reduced these principles into laws. The first is the law of similarity and the second is the law of contact or contagion. Basing on these laws, he classified magic into two categories, imitative or homeopathic magic and contagious magic. Now imitative magic, it is the magic which is associated with the law of similarity. Following this law, the magical practitioner infers that he can produce any desired effect by imitating it. Imitative magic includes both white or beneficial and black or harmful magic. White magic, the magical ceremony which is performed for beneficial end is known as white magic. Familiar examples are fertility rights to ensure or increase the growth of crops and the successful birth of animals or human being by X as symbolically depicting bountiful harvest or sexual intercourse, pregnancy and parturition. Rain magic involving the imitation of falling rain or flowing water is common among primitive people who subsist simply by horticulture. Black magic. Black magic is that kind of magic which is always used to do harm in the society. One of the most striking and prevalent form of the black magic is the image magic. Images range from highly concrete and pictorial doll-like representations of human beings or animals to the symbolic representations. The burning of effigies is the common form of black magic. Contagious magic. Contagious magic is associated with the law of contact, that is, things once in contact with each other remain forever in association even if the contact is physically severed. The main implication of the law of contact is that a part is always associated with the whole to which it belongs or belonged. Once a part is always a part. This association is extended to clothing, nail cuttings, hair trimming, utensils, personal effects, and so on. It is because of this belief that the personal belongings of the dead are not made use of 
by many primitive groups but are instead buried or cremated along with the dead body. Now, we'll discuss something about the differences between magic and religion. Norbeck quotes the distinction between magic and religion from the works of William J. Goody, who makes use of a polar scheme of interpretation. Magic and religion represent a continuum, and these are distinguished only ideal typically. He provides a useful summary of what he describes as characteristic emerging most prominently in anthropological writings as theoretical acts in distinguishing magic and religion. He gives his distinctive points, distinctive differences in some different points. The so point number one, concrete specificity of goal relates most closely to the magical complex. This overlaps towards religious goal more than most characteristic, since religious rewards are usually to be found in this world. However, religious goals do lean more heavily in the direction of general welfare, health, good weather, and eschatological occurrences. The next point is, the manipulative attitude is to be found most strongly at the musical complex as against the supplicative, propitiatory, or casualing at the religious complex. The next point, the professional client relationship is ideally theoretically to be found in the magical complex. The shepherd flock or prophet follower is more likely in the religious component. The next point, individual ends are more frequently to be found towards the magical end of this continuum is against groupal ends towards the other. Now the next point, with regard to the process of achieving the goal, in case of magical failure, there is more likely to be a substitution or introduction of other techniques. Next point, the practitioner decides whether the process is to start at all towards musical complex. Towards religious goal, the ritual must be carried out. That it must be done is part of the structure of the universe. The next point, defined as instrumental by the society, music is thought of as at least is potentially directed against the society. Religious rituals are not thought of as even potentially directed against the society. The last point is a final, ideally distinguishing characteristic. Magic is used only instrumentally, that is, for goals. The religious complex may be used for goals, but at its ideal complex, the practices are ends in themselves. Students, now we will come to the relation between magic and religion. Magic and religion are very close to each other in their role as tools of adaptation. The following are some points of relationship between magic and religion. Magic and religion are both imbued with the mystery of the world. 
religion seeks an explanation in terms of spirits and gods. Magic does in terms of force. Nonetheless, the roles of magician and the priest are often combined in one person. The art of magician and many religious rituals are meant to create an atmosphere of suggestibility. The technique of both magic and religion is ritualistic, the performance of which is governed by a traditional order. As I am told you, my dear students, though there may be some differences between magic and religion, these two continuum, magic and religion, is somewhat related. Now we will come to the relation between magic and science. Science and magic are closely related. Both science and magic depend upon mechanistic procedures. Magic and science both assume the existence of non-variant relations and the operation of impersonal causes in a more or less mechanical fashion. In magic, there is assumed a uniformity of cause and effect. Fraser says that the two are essentially the same, the difference being that magic is based on wrong assumptions regarding causal relations. The two attitudes, scientific and magical, differ. The former is matter of fact and the latter has in it an element of amazement, expectation, uncertainty, etc. Science assumes only natural cause and arrives at a result after observation, experiment and verification. Magic assumes occult causes and works in an atmosphere of distinct unreality, excluding verification as part of its technique. The failures of science are due to inadequate knowledge and can be corrected by further research. The failures of magic are supposed to be due to some error in the performance of ritual or else due to counter magic by more powerful magicians. Religion is a main concern of men. Laws, customs and fashion are not the only means of social control. Overriding them all are religion and morality, which formulate the safe of all of them. They are not only influential forces of social control, but the most effective guides of human behavior. Unless we understand them thoroughly, we shall fail to understand the society.